In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I add a six inch zipper pocket to the main body lining panel of my sidekick hip bag. There's a mouthful. So there's some tools that I use that make this process a bit easier. So I'll talk through those first. So the first one is some really sharp scissors with a pointy end. You'll thank me for that later. A friction pen, or you can really use any pen or pencil, but these are my favorite to use. Double-sided tape, the skinny type. So this is about quarter of an inch wide. We don't want too much wider than that or you end up seeing it and it can gum your needles up. So try and get skinny double-sided tape. I just get mine from somewhere like Kmart or the cheap shop. Uh, of course, you need your zipper. Now, if you're using the continuous zipper tape like I am, please don't cut your zip at six inches. Make sure you cut it at seven inches. If you cut it right at six inches, you're not going to be able to grab those ends in the stitching. So that's just a little reminder. Cut that seven inches rather than six for a six inch zipper pocket if it's the continuous zipper tape. If you've purchased uh, like a dress zip, that will actually have those end bits already included. So if you buy a six inch zipper, dress zipper, um, that will be fine. It'll work. Now, I'm using a number five zip for this. So it's a bit of, um, it's wider tape and also wider teeth, which are nice and easy to open and close. You also need a ruler. Now I've got a little acrylic template here that I've had made, which is exactly six inches long by half an inch wide. And it's got these little dots in it that I'll use. So that's what I'll be using today. But of course, any ruler with measurements on it will work perfectly. Let's get started. First step is to grab one of our pocket pieces, which already has the interfacing fused to the back of it. And what you're going to do is fold this in half. The measurement for this pocket piece is eight by eight inches. Fold it in half like so and flip it over. We're working on the back. So for me, the interfacing side. You're then going to draw a line two inches from the top of the pocket piece. You're then going to I'm going to use my little six inch. Well, let's not. I'll use my, I'll do it the proper way for you guys, right? Now you can, I should have just marked so you could see it. That's that center mark there that I made at the beginning. So I'm just going to draw a six inch box. So six inches length by half inch wide. And I'm going to draw a line down the middle. So that line is quarter of an inch. And then you're going to put a mark in at the one inch points on each end. So for me with this little ruler, that's super easy. You just draw around it and put your dots in there. All right, and then you're going to draw, I just freehand these, just draw a little triangle. like so. I'll show you that up close. So some nice, clear, easy to see marks. That's what's most important so that when I sew um, my pocket piece, which we're going to do in a minute, it's nice and easy to see. Try and make those little short edges nice and sharp. There we go. All righty. Okay, so I find the center point. On the main lining panel just by folding it in half and I've put a mark here with my friction pen. The friction pens are great because when you iron it that mark will actually come off so they're great for marking. I'm just going to line up the center points here. Now the pattern recommends that you work half an inch down from the top so we're going to do that like so, and what that means is it sits in the right position. So when then you open your hip bag, um, it's right there, sort of easy access. You're just gonna pin through the layers. Now, just remember here, we're working right sides of fabric together. 
Just pin to hold it in place and we're ready to sew. Now, if you have a zipper foot, now's a great time to put it on your machine. I don't uh, know where mine is, so I'm just using my trusty old Teflon foot again. Now, I'm just starting. You can see where the end of my box is. So anywhere along this straight edge here is where I begin. Really important is to turn your stitch length down to a two is what I like to use. So I like to get nice small stitch length uh stitch length stitches for this and you'll see why soon so i'm just going to stitch on the lines which are the outside of the box lines until i get to a corner and i'll show you what we do here now i might hand crank that right so we want a nice sharp turn here just get rid of these clips and I'm going to now put my stitch length down to between a 1.5 and a 1.7 for this. Take that pin out now and just go. So I've pivoted nice and straight, right? So what I'm trying to avoid is I want um, my stitches to go like an L like a really nice nice sharp corner not cutting across the corner if you've ever had that happen I believe that the um, reducing my stitch length helps that process so we're back in this corner again in the next corner okay now I'm gonna go back up to a two so it's a bit of um, a bit of jigging around backwards and forwards with the stitch length but I feel like it gives you a beautiful finish, which is what we want. Uh, the other thing I'm doing, I'm not rushing. I'm going slow with my stitching to try and get it nice and straight. So again, right in that corner, pivot and reduce my stitch length. Beautiful. It's nice when everything plays nice, isn't it? <laughs> spinning around again all right then we're going to go back up to a two and we're on the home stretch now of our stitching just like piping um it would be very rare that i wouldn't be adding a zipper pocket to a bag that i make i think they're really handy and the more that you practice you become quicker and neater so don't be afraid. If your first one doesn't look the way that mine does, that's okay. It does take a bit of practice to get this right. So that's now what we have. Beautiful, clean stitching, small stitches, um, nice and neat there. Now it's time to do a bit of cutting. Now comes the scary part, cutting your perfectly good bag. <clears throat> Putting a bit of a slice in it. So I'm just using my ruler and rotary cutter. And I'm just cutting. You can use scissors, whatever works for you. I'm cutting from one, one dot here to the other dot. Then you're going to come along with your sharp scissors. Maybe these aren't as sharp as I hoped. Let me just grab my even sharper ones. Let's see if these ones work. The reason you want sharp is when you get to this corner, you want to, want to cut as close as you can to the stitch line, of course, without cutting your stitching. So having a really fine point or tip at the end of your scissors helps with that. So cutting right down. Repeat that for all of those tips. The closer you can get that, the neater the next step's going to be. Now, if I was working with a bulkier interfacing and bulkier fabric, what I would do next is actually cut out all of this excess bulk within the box. We might, I'll show you how I do these little ends. I don't know that we need to with this particular um, design because it's not super thick. But if I'm using um, foam interfacing or fleece, fusible fleece, I would cut all of this out. All right. So you would continue if you wanted to. You would continue just cutting that out. The reason that I do uh, that I'm not doing that on this is I feel like this this is going to give my zipper pocket a bit more support. 
feel free to have a go by doing either for, for your bag. So what I'm going to do next is push this pocket piece through the slot all the way through. Like so. I'm just going to finger press that down for now and then I'll go and give it a, a little iron in a minute. So I just want to get, again, really nice, clean seams. Like so. So now you have your little window. I'm just going to go and give that a press and then we'll insert the zipper. It's getting exciting. Here we go. I've just pressed my pocket and I've also just used my little seam roller to really take out any bulk that might be left particularly in these um, corner points all right so we have this ready to go so that's the front view and this is the back view so you can see on the back a bit tricky to see but you can see there's some little creases here now they would be um a lot worse if that was fusible fleece again or foam so if it was that's where i would cut out that bulk but with this mid-weight interfacing sitting really nicely what you need to worry about is how the front looks no one's going to be looking inside these seams because we're going to be stitching them down soon so just manipulate pull it press it punch it you can um use a hammer to press it down just really try and get that bulk out and once you've done that you need to grab your zipper and the double-sided tape and all we're going to do is stick some of this if we can find the end of it just along each side along the outer edge of your zipper tape I don't um, don't tend to put it all the way along you can if you want but with my machine it does seem to gum up the needle which I don't like so just like that a little bit of tape either side double-sided tape now if you don't have double-sided tape which you may not uh, you could use a glue stick if you've got one I haven't got one on me but um actually in your packs from the virtual retreat you'll find a glue stick from boo designs which you can use gave you guys all the packs so i don't have one here but you get the idea it's just to hold this in position because we can't really pin them very effectively it's super sticky all right so we've got this next thing that we do bring the pocket piece you have to keep moving these zipper heads. And of course, I've picked the bulkiest zip head, haven't I? Um, you're just going to center the zip. And making sure that we've got a little bit left at each um, short end so that we can stitch over that. Alrighty, so just wiggling it all around so you can get a straight, straight finish there. Okay, so what I'm looking for when I do this is that my zipper tape is nice and straight. So there we go, looking good. Now what we're going to do next is stitch our zipper in place over to the machine. Alrighty, time to sew our zip in place. So first things first, stitch length. I'm going to be using my top stitch stitch length, which is 3.5. You're gonna be using your zipper foot if you have one. If you don't, you can do what I do. <laughs> Just, I'm using my Teflon foot. And moving the position of my needle because again what I'm doing is using the edge of my foot to get a nice nice straight finish now if it moves if the zipper moves you can just readjust as you're going if you need to All right. just going slow again 
stitching that zip in place. No need to change stitch lengths at the end for the top stitching. Now, the beauty of nylon uh, zips is you can just stitch straight over the top of them. If you have metal, I don't recommend metal zips for beginners, um, but you would need to hand crank that across because I've stitched over zipper teeth. Trying to just keep this straight. It wants to move just a little bit. So just I'm supporting um, this end with my hand. Whoopsie. You can always come back and unpick your stitches if you need to, if you go a little bit wobbly. Now as I get to this end, what I'm going to do is move this zip head out of the way. So now you have to um, hold it. I'm holding the end. See those zip this here it's underneath I'm just holding that in place with my fingers so I can stitch over it you could um, you could zigzag stitch that closed before you put it in place but I don't have time for that today <clears throat> alrighty on the home stretch again one secure zipper I like to add some fray stop ones covered in glue to the ends of the zip since they are raw just to prevent any fraying you can see what this looks like from the back now everything's held in securely you could do another row of stitching around that if you really wanted to but it's not going anywhere so next we need to add the other side of your pocket piece so take the other pocket piece and place it on top of the zip with the right sides of the fabrics uh, together this is really important and I'll show you why you're then going to pin along the top edge and the side edges now I'm not pinning the main body panel I'm just pinning the pocket pieces together What you're going to do next is go over to your machine and you're going to stitch the pocket pieces together. You are not stitching the main body panel at all. So you're just going to lift up the sides, stitch up here, here, here. Just follow your pinned edges. Do not stitch the bottom of your pocket. Alrighty, so as you can see, I've stitched here where my pinned edges were. And now we have a completed six inch zipper pocket. And let's look inside. Ta-da! So this is where, if you do choose a, a beautiful fabric for the pockets, you know, you get a little surprise when you open up your zip pocket and there's something funky hiding inside in there. That's how we do a, a six inch zip pocket, friends. I can't wait to see how yours turns out.